Hello everyone and welcome to this special event, which is part of the series of events organised by the British Union of Spiritist Societies, celebrating the 175th anniversary of the birth of the French Spiritist philosopher, Leon Denis. Today is the very last of these events where we will be closing this year of talks by having a retrospective wrap-up and round table with some of the lecturers from the year. Who will be with us, I, I hear you ask? Well, we will be joined in just a moment by Alexandre Calgini, Charles Kempf, Dana C.C., Faye Waddington, Umberto Schubert, Munir Gariba, Roberto Watanabe and Vanessa Ancelone. Now, we know that not everyone had the chance to watch the previous talks live with us, but do not worry. You can still find them and watch them at any time on the BUS Facebook page and YouTube channel, as well as on the Facebook and YouTube pages of fa Facebook and YouTube pages of the Irish Spiritist Federation, Cardiac Radio, and Cardiac Group, who have been restreaming the talks all year. And don't forget that if you like any of the videos, please, please, please give a thumbs up. Give a like, give a heart, get, leave a comment, show your appreciation, as that way we know that you're watching and that you really do, do like it. And if you don't like it, leave a comment anyway, because we want to know why. Well, before we bring on our guests, we're going to invite Elsa Rossi, chairperson of the British Union of Spiritus Societies, to give us a few words. Elsa, you're on, you're on mute. Hello, dear Adam. Thank you so much, Adam. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, I am sure you will join me in saying that Adam Osborne has been a wonderful roast on behalf of Bass for this project and so many others. Thank you ever so much, Adam. It is with great joy that I, as a chairperson of BAS, see this year's task marvelously come to an end. We are closing a year of talks about the life and works of Leon Denis. To Leon Denis, to our benefactors, our deepest gratitude. My gratitude also goes to our beloved Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the spirit who has been inspiring us at BAS. It is my pleasure to tell you all that people from around the world have watched this Leon Denis event this year, thanks to the collaboration of our wonderful partners, Kardec Radio, Kardec Group, and the Irish Spiritist Federation. I would also like to express my warmest Thanks to all our generous and wonderful lecturers, our dear friends who are always willing to be with us, sharing their time and energy in a joint effort to make Leon Denis known worldwide. We hope Bas can count on you all again in the future. Last but not least, my deepest thanks to you, our loyal audience who know now committed bus is in spreading the spiritist teachings. God bless you all. May everyone have a Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Elsa. Thank you for being with us and thank you for organizing this event during the year. Thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do actually have a bit of news from BUS that we're going to start with the event with today. Uh, as our loyal, our loyal viewers will know that we normally have the announcements near the end, but we do have one little announcement right now. And that is this that the bus edition of Le Pourquoi de la Vie, The Purpose of Life, is now available to purchase 
as an ebook via Amazon. So it's available for the Kindle reader. And you can go and get that right now on Amazon. So that is The Purpose of Life, the bus's English edition of Le Pourquoi de la Vie by Leon Denis is available now. So, you know, you can go and get it as soon as this lecture is over. And of course, as always, there are many other books available for well, many other books from Bus also available on Amazon. So go and get someone nice, a nice Christmas present. You know, never know. One of these books may be really suitable for someone you know. There's enough time still to get that fast delivery. Right. So time to bring on our past speakers. Now, not all of them are able to be with us today. Uh, we know that uh, Dan Assisi is running a little bit late. He will be with us. He said he will be with us. And uh, Faye has said that she may need to drop off a little bit early. That's not a problem. And of course, we, do, we don't have people such as Daniel Stigo or, or Flavio with us today. Uh, but... Let's welcome on the people who I did mention. So let's bring on Alexandri, Charles, Faye, Munir, Roberto, Vanessa, and Umberto. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's great to have you all with us once again. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to have everyone just spend five minutes or so to give a recap about what you talked about before and your reflections about the Leon Denis work that you presented. And after that, we will have the round table where anyone live, anyone watching live, not anyone live, we're all live, anyone watching live with us can send questions for the panel and, and the guests are going to be asking each other questions as well. And of course, anyone out there who's watching with us, please say hello in the live chat, which will be on either on your on the side or just below depending on how you're watching us and we'll try and give you a hello back so let's kick things off and get started in chronological order so we are going to go first to charles kempf who talked to us in january um charles please give us a reminder about your talk <clears throat> on the spiritist philosopher Yes, thank you, uh, Adam. Thank you, Elsa. Thank you all uh, who are uh, assisting uh, since the beginning this uh, commemoration of Leon Denis. For us, it's really uh, a particular. Uh, uh, we, we are really very thankful no, for uh, uh, this uh, homage no, the, of uh, Leon Denis, this uh, French uh, follower, apostle of Alan Kardec. Uh, because, I mean, uh, we love him here and uh, we see that we are not alone and he's, he's being really appreciated uh, everywhere in the world, almost, uh, where he's known at least, and uh, now also in the English-speaking uh, countries. Uh. So uh, I had uh, also, I'm very thankful uh, for having been invited to talk the 1st of January. It was his birthday, uh, 175 years of the birth, and I could then develop a little bit uh, some very uh, high-level highlights uh, of his works, showing uh, the actuality of these works, how they are actual, how it's still very uh, answering to the problems uh, that he, he identified at his time, uh, which is more or less one century ago when he made the last revisions of the books, and the, the, the problems which basically are today still the same. So uh, his books are very, very uh, of uh, big uh, actuality and answering to deep questions uh, that we still have today. I could also uh, develop a little bit uh, some biography of his uh, story of his life, showing uh, that uh, all this type of apostles which are doing this type of uh, mission do not uh, have a very easy and a very, uh, how to say, uh, comfortable uh, childhood. Huh? Always, uh, very, since very young, a lot of difficulties to overcome, to leave school, to work, to, add, to, add, to help his father, and so on. Uh, a lot of uh, moves uh, inside France huh? until uh, the family fixed uh, 
his uh, uh, location in the city of Tours. And th that is where then uh, Leon Denis, after having facing all these difficulties, found in a bookshop uh, the, the books of Alan Kardec. And that was for him the revelation, the déjà vu, the, really the answers, uh, logic and rational answers to a lot of questions he had uh, along uh, his youth huh? and uh, adhering uh, immediately to it and also having the opportunity to meet Kardec, uh, Alan Kardec personally at three times. Huh? Uh, the first time was in uh, 1867 uh, in Tours huh? when Alan Kardec and Amélie Boudet went there uh, to make a uh, uh, conference about uh, obsession huh? and uh, he met him also once in Paris huh, in Passage Saint Anne and the third time in a commemoration of uh, some other groups uh, in the vicinity of the city of Tours and uh, after the death of uh, Alan Kardec, Leon Denis, uh, he started writing and these are things that we discovered quite recently I think uh, at the first of January I wasn't aware yet Uh, he was already publishing uh, some articles in uh, the, some Belgian uh, spiritist magazines huh, in 1876, 1877, which means the period uh, where he was uh, also uh, in the Masonic, huh, uh, in the group of demophiles huh, from the uh, big orient uh, trend uh, in France. And... Uh, Uh, that he left in 1883, probably because uh, the Grand Orient uh, removed the notion of God from the basic credo, uh, and that uh, Leon Denis, who was already spiritist, could not, you know, to say, uh, accept uh, that idea, uh, knowing perfectly uh, the existence and necessity of the existence of God and uh, his definition and all the attributes as per the spiritist teachings. And that is then where he developed a lot uh, his writings, huh? the, the, the Pourquoi de la Vie, huh? the, uh, the Purpose of Life, that I'm very happy now to see that it will be uh, widely spread uh, also in English language because it's a small booklet which is very, very, very useful for a first contact of people uh, with the Spiritist teachings huh? because it's quite softer a little bit than... Uh, the book, uh, the, the Spiritism, Spiritist in its simplest expression from Kardec and uh, very helpful uh, for this purpose. And since it is small, we do it very cheap and uh, just leave it around into the book boxes that are around everywhere now here in the streets in France, I think also in UK. And really we are uh, giving it uh, for free to a lot of people uh, with quite some success. And then, of course, he started doing the lectures. He participated more actively to the Spiritist movement, congresses, and uh, wrote uh, After Death, huh, which is his first big books. And then the series uh, like uh, uh, Christianism and Spiritism, like uh, Into the Unseen, like uh, The Problem of the Being and the Destiny, which is the, 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 the sickest, the major one, uh, The Big Enigma. Um, John, John of Arc uh, Medium, and the last one he wrote was uh, The Genie Celtic and Le Monde Invisible, huh? the, the Celtic uh, Genius and the Invisible World, uh, completing then his uh, huge work uh, in favor of Spiritist teachings. So I think I burnt out already the five minutes. Uh, Adam, please cut me. Uh, very happy to see Dan here is joining. So for us, again, I would like to express my deep gratitude to all of you who really uh, made this fantastic work of uh, spreading Leon Denis, whose teachings are uh, really of burning uh, actuality today and uh, bringing a lot of resources to overcome the natural difficulties of life. Thank you so much, Charles, for that little reminder of the spiritist philosopher who is leon denis well where do we go next well in february we had flavio zanetti with us who was talking about the celtic or celtic genius in and the invisible world then in march we had with us vanessa and saloni vanessa please come and remind us about the book after death and you're on mute Thank you, Adam. It's good to be here with this team in this year 
that as Elsa Rossi said, is fantastic. It's the first time that we have such uh, an event in tribute to the works and the legacy of Lyon Denis. Lyon Denis represents to us the people of the regenerated world who are very lucid in terms of the reasons why we are here. And the book that we talked about was After Death. The book After Death by Lyon Denis is the first very meaningful, as Charles just mentioned to us, of the written books by Lyon Denis. And it represents uh, life-changing opportunities for many people. As we mentioned in our talk, one of the main spiritists and uh, the most elevated ones, according to Chico Charv, Xavier Euripides Barsanufo in Brazil, he really embraced spiritism after reading the book After Death. For those who don't know, Professor Euripides Barsanufo is the founder of the unique uh, system, the spiritist school in Brazil, now several ones throughout the country. They really bring a new education for the new human being on earth. Leon Denis inspired such works and many others and does to date. And in this book, for us who are here, we studied about how especially the last part of the book, the fifth part of the book that talks about the moral pathway, the ethical moral way of being. Leon Denis shows to us the importance of studying, of being dutiful, of understanding who we are, reading ourselves of pride and selfishness and leading us to love. Of all highlights, I'll bring two main highlights from the talk, reading short excerpts from the book, teasing us to enter the holiday season, reading books such as this one. When he talks about studying, since we're studying here together, he says, studying is the fountain of noble and sweet pleasures. It delivers us from our common worries and makes us forget life's sorrows. Books are sincere friends who welcome us as well in happy times as in misfortune. And later, Leon Denis, in one of the most uh, amazing chapters of all of his books, when he talks about love, not this love that we think, the romantic love, the true love, he reminds us of the only pathway through which we're going to evolve. Through the expansion of our ability to love. To love God above all things. To love ourselves. To be able to love others. And he says, deep as the sea. And infinite as the sky. Love kindles all the beings. God is its irradiating center. He goes on and on, inspiring us. And I'll leave you to one of his sentences in this very chapter about love that strikes me the most. And I never forget when he talks to us, the reader, by saying, Dear reader, when you read this, feel my embrace, for we are destined to meet in immortality. I made it my words, and this is the feeling that I have when I read and study Leon Denis. Thank you, Vanessa. Well, as the Beatles always say, all you need is love. So there we go. <laughs> okay, thank you. So uh, where do we go next? In April, we had with us Umberto Schubert, who was talking about Spiritism in the Arts. Umberto, please come and do a little reminder about Spiritism in the Arts. Hello, guys. Greetings to everyone, uh, to everyone that is watching uh, us, and also to 
to this here, to, to the extraordinary team that Buzz gathered uh, to celebrate the profound uh, thought of Leon Denis. Uh, I feel um, by meeting the English speaking spiritist community that I just discovered a part of my own family uh, that I did not know <laughs> two years ago. And, and suddenly I have all these relatives, cousins uh, abroad everywhere. And uh, it is a beautiful feeling for me. Uh, I think uh, this is also the general mood of Leon Denis. Uh, he is always so warm. He is so intimate in the way that uh, he deals with very, very sensitive subjects, uh, such as, for example, uh, existential uh, dramas and, and problems of his time that are so uh, present to our days now, um, suicide, depression, lack of meaning, lack of purpose, lack of directions in life. Uh, and when Leon Denis uh, speaks to us about art, he um, he's never actually teaching us about the history of art, or techniques or theory of art, he's trying to enlighten us to the fact that art and aesthetics in general, also the aesthetical feeling we have uh, with nature, with, with uh, beautiful natural landscapes, with flowers and waterfalls and uh, starry skies and, and people and animals and butterflies and <laughs> whatever uh, we may uh, we may see and appreciate as beautiful uh, in in this phenomena in this mental process or in this spiritual process we are also growing uh, in Leon Denis perspective he masterfully applied Alain Kardec's thoughts uh, on the progress of the mind, the progress of the spirit and the life of spirit to the aesthetical realm, to the artistic realm, something that was uh, never uh, attempted before Leon Denis' work. So uh, not only this book, but uh, all works of Leon Denis in general, they uh, are a new gate in spiritism to an entirely different uh, landscape and scenario that involves the existential nature uh, of aesthetics and art. I will mention uh, here some of the many subjects of the book, um, the, the spiritual element in the arts, and the role of spiritual inspiration in humanity's masterworks, especially the role of mediumship, which is uh, not so veiled or not so discreet as many may believe. Uh, also the capital importance of aesthetics to the life of the spirit, beauty not only as uh, a minor subject or a minor uh, happening in our lives, but as a capital happening in, in our life, in our spiritual existence, beauty as virtue and part of life, part of the life of, of the spirit. Also, uh, beauty, meaning of life, purpose in life. We just saw the extraordinary uh, book on the purpose of life. Uh, which is the first from uh, Leon Denis and one of the most striking and uh, interesting books ever written, in my opinion. And God. So how beauty, meaning, purpose and God relate to each other. You may find uh, similar correlations in very intricate uh, philosophical books. But uh, in Leon Denis, uh, 
spiritism in the arts. You will learn a lot about that in a very straightforward and simple way. So uh, I think we are now experiences, experiencing a, a tide shift in the direction of uh, a more consistent appreciation of art and aesthetics in many spiritual communities, uh, including spiritism. And I hope that in, in the next years we can explore that a bit more. And also maybe as a suggestion, we can explore more uh, about the works of Gabriel Delan, Camille Flammarion, or uh, the great British spiritualists such as William Crookes, Conan Doyle, uh, or Stainton Moses. That, that would be quite interesting. So thank you uh, all for all the, the effort and the sacrifices that you put it in, in this uh, very large campaign in favor of uh, one of our most extraordinary thinkers, Leon Denis. Thank you, Umberto. Yeah, absolutely. We have so many other wonderful people that we need to study at some point as well. But, you know, I think with all the books out there, we need to take it very slowly. So thank you for that. Um, in May, we had with us Roberto Watanabe, who was talking about the first part of the book, The Problem of Life and Destiny. Roberto, please come and remind us about that first part of the book. Thank you, Adam. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here with you. Yes, as Adam said, that uh, my speech was about the problem of life and destiny and uh, the first part, which is uh, concerning the problem of life. Uh, I believe that the main, the main issue from this part is on the chapter four, where um, Denis talks about the personality. And there she, he says that, uh, he, he talks about the conscience. And he says that the conscience, the me, is the center of the being, the very essence of a personality, of our personality. But then he says that below the, nor, uh, below the level of the normal consciousness, uh, there exists in us other planes of consciousness, other layers or zones. And such planes of consciousness, uh, un, uh, under certain conditions, they can, ban they can be manifested in ourselves. And that is the case, for example, of the double personality. Uh, he gave us some examples of clairvoyance, uh, telepathy, and premonition, and others, right? So we, 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 we saw all this during uh, my speech. And all these situations are related to this somnambulistic state. And uh, so uh, he concludes saying that uh, we have an uh, our ordinary superficial me, which is in our conscience. And this uh, superficial me seems to be just a fragment of a deep me. So in this deep me, which is in ourselves, uh, we have there recorded a whole world of facts, information and memories uh, from our long past history. So uh, that's very interesting, uh, Denis brings us uh, in this uh, first part of uh, this book. And what I learned from that, uh, first uh, I made a kind of a relationship from these uh, concepts or ideas with the ideas of uh, Carl Gustav Jung, the Swiss psychiatrist, which is in the media of the last century. He, he, he talks about something very similar to what Denis says. Uh, he, he says that the, we have our consciousness and the consciousness is the known part of our mind. And the, the center of the consciousness is the ego. So we can relate the, the superficial me from Denise with the ego from, from Jung. And then Jung, as, as, uh, like Denise, says that uh, below this uh, level of consciousness, we also have other layers of consciousness. 
or unconscious. He, 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 he named it unconscious. And he, he said that the, below the level of, of conscious, consciousness, we have uh, the personal unconscious, where we have the complexes, and the, the collective unconscious, where we have some kind of a primordial images inherited from the, our long pastry, past as humanity. And, and these uh, primordial images, he calls it archetypes. Uh, some, this, uh, something like, for example, the archetype of a god, uh, the sage, uh, the mother earth, um, and, and so on and so forth. So, but the, the, the main archetype we have in our collective unconscious is the concept of a self. So the self, uh, as Jung says, is the main archetype and the, it unites our personality. It harmonizes all other archetypes we have. It provides self-realization. It uh, provides peace with, with ourselves and with the world. So we can relate this self from, self from Jung with the deep in me from, from Denis. So that's the relationship that, that, that I did. And then we also know that uh, the spirit Joana de Angelis, which is the mentor of the medium Divaldo Franco, which everybody knows for sure. And she studied uh, the, the ideas of Jung. And what she says as, as, is that the self is nothing more than the immortal spirit, heir to himself, she says. So and then we can, all this relationship, right? The, the deep me related to the self from Jung, and then through Joanna de Angelis, we, we come to the spiritist doctrine, right? The self is nothing more than the spirit. And then we, we can learn from the spiritist book that the spirit is the individualization of the intelligent principle. We are, we all are spirits, right? And then we are created simple and ignorant by God, and we are all destined, destined to perfection. And in order to accomplish such perfection, we reincarnate innumerable times throughout our, our immortal lives, right? So well, the conclusion that I, 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 what I could learn from all that is uh, to be aware of how important it is to be conscious. Uh, it's how important it to us or for us to be conscious of being a spirit and not only uh, uh, just an ordinary person. Uh, to be, uh, to be, to realize that uh, regardless of our age in this incarnation, we are all very old spirits with a long personal history behind and uh, an infinite life ahead. So that brings us a new perspective regarding the meaning and purpose of our life, uh, which is to evolve um, towards the relative perfection. So relative, I mean relative because absolute perfection only God has, right? So uh, that's, I think, is the main lesson that I learned from from reading this book and from preparing the presentation and to to to, to making the speech I, I, I did last May. So uh, thank you all for this wonderful opportunity to, stu to study in more uh, detail, uh, uh, deeply this, this book of Leon Denis, this important book, this philosophical book of Leon Denis, The Problem of Life and Destiny. Thank you all. Thank you, Roberto. Well, you know, we can't read talk only about half a book, can we? That's not really fair. So in June, uh, Munir Gariba was with us talking about the second part of the problem of life and destiny. Munir, please give us a recap about that second part of the book. And you're on mute. Um... Adam, I want to thank you and uh, Elsa for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to talk about Leon Denis and his uh, wonderful work. My greetings to all those um, sharing here the studio with me and all those watching us. 
Um, as Roberto said, this is a wonderful book. It's a treasure, indeed. It's a, a book, you know, when you finish, you want to read it all over again. And at the very beginning, in the introduction, Leon Denis talks about the responsibility of the new generation, the, the, the educational system. At his time, it's about just over 100 years ago, and it seems as if he's, uh, he was writing about our present situation. It's very much like what we are seeing today. The, uh, the posture, the, the, uh, the way the new generation faces the challenges in life. And it's a wonderful book because what uh, I realize is that in this book, Leon Denis, he brings to life all the information, the knowledge that we get from Kardec's books. It is as if, um, you know, he takes all the laws and all the information given by the spirits in, in Kardec's work and with the comments of Kardec. And then he weaves a very nice, in, in, a, in a poetic and philosophical way, he weaves a very nice presentation of uh, Kardec's works. So it's wonderful to read because he's got a very clear mind he uh, brings examples from other researchers as well. He mentions a lot Charles Richer, because as we are going to see part two and part three, especially in part two, he talks about successive lives and the laws of reincarnation. When he talks about the laws of reincarnation, we know that we have an experience in the physical world. We then return to spirit and then come back. And he analyzes where all the experience from previous incarnations, where they are stored, where are they? Are they stored in our memory? And why is that we don't remember them? But how do they affect us in the present life? So he talks about the laws of reincarnation, the renovation of the memory, how we can retrieve this memory, the ways we can retrieve this, this memory. He talks about hypnotism as a, one of the ways to do that, but also Synambulism and uh, and during uh, sleep. Then he talks about the infant prodigies that we see as the proof of reincarnation. So he brings cases, the historical proofs. He brings a lot of research that was done at his time. It's uh, full of examples. And the beauty is that it's like you know opening a door and seeing a bright new world where all that we find in Kardex books are there alive. And you know, it was a world that obeys all the laws that the spirits brought to us. So it's, it's a wonderful book. It's, um, it's um, as I said before, it's a book, you know, you, you feel sorry when you finish it and you want to start it all over again. So he talks about uh, justice and responsibility. And this is a key point in this part too. It called my attention very much is justice and responsibility because we have reincarnation and our reincarnation is planned and it follows a sequence and this sequence is according to laws and what he tries to tell us is that there is justice and also there is our responsibility and then he finishes this part talking about the law of destiny and the law of destiny so he asks, why are we reborn? So what is the purpose of reincarnation? So um, reincarnation, as he says, as he puts, is, is, is uh, you know, is for us to play a new act in the drama of life. And then what we do during this play, we, as he put it, we acquit old debts and we conquer new powers. So in the end, it's a process of ascension. And we can, using this uh, power that we have, using, um, as we're gonna, going to see in part three, our free will, uh, we can accentuate this process forward. So speed it up. And uh, he gives us all these this, um, ideas about you know, the future and what we do today is actually um, affecting uh, our future. He talks about successive lives, the law of justice, that the law of justice reveals itself in the smallest details of life. So it's not a law that 
it's obeyed only when we prepare our incarnation or when we return to spirit. But as he put it, in the smallest details in life. Um, another aspect also is uh, the freedom of action of the spirit. So the spirit has the freedom of action. So we analyze our past, we prepare our present, as it were, our incarnation, and then based on our performance, we are going to um, move into the next step based on what we have accomplished or not, and what we need to accomplish in the next phase. So he puts it as a natural process, as the law of justice, as it, that is a law of harmony, and then it determines the consequences of our acts and um, that we commit in, in, our, in the exercise of our freedom. So he gives us the control of this process. And this is the beauty of this uh, part two. He gives us an idea where all the information is going to be stored, how we can retrieve that, all the uh, results from, from um, research that have been done, but also say, well, the power, the decision is in our hands. So we have control of our, of our future. So because he's talking about destiny, so he says, if you allow me to uh, read this excerpt from, from this part, destiny has no other rule than that of good and evil practiced. Above all things reigns a great and mighty law by virtue of which every living being in the universe can only enjoy a situation proportionate to its merits. So it gives us this idea that whatever happens to me today is a result of the law of justice. There is justice in that. It is in accordance to what I have, um, my acts in, in the past. And the purpose is to perfect me, it's not to punish me. So he takes away this idea of, uh, of punishment. Uh, then part third, he talks about the powers of the soul. And he stresses very much the will, free will, liberty that we have to act, our thoughts, the importance of discipline of our thoughts and the reform of character. So this is something we should bear in mind throughout incarnations to discipline our thoughts and to reform our character because whatever we're going to reap in the future is, as he just uh, told us, proportionate to the effort we've made in these, um, in these uh, regards. And he talks about love and sorrow. Um, and I just want to finish with a, another excerpt from this part three, that is, there is a powerful reservoir of forces and, energy and energies hidden within us. The causes of happiness are not found in determined localities in space, but are in us in the profound mysteries of the soul. So this is a book for life. This is a book for uh, Christmas, this Christmas, next Christmas, and whatever opportunity you have to read it and read it over again. It is a wonderful book. It is a treasure. So basically, th this was the impression I, I got while preparing the, the talk about parts two and, and three of this uh, book, um, Life and Destiny. Thank you. Thank you, Munir. Thank you for that good overview. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, right. Well, most people will know that normally I like to put the little ticker going along the bottom on the, of the screen, asking people to say hello, to give a wave, to give a thumbs up. But unfortunately, when I do that, let's see what happens. It covers half of Dan's face. So I'm not really going to do that this time. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Um, but instead, please send us a hello if you're watching us. Give us a thumbs up, give a like, share this post, share the post of this. You know, get more, trying to get more people watching. We've still got time for more people to come and join us. But let's take a moment just to say hello to the people who have been saying hello so far. So let's say hello to, first of all, Stefan Batozo, who's with us and who's from the Irish Federation. Thank you, because it's actually their StreamYard account, which we've been using this past year for these events. So thank you for being with us, Stevan, and 
Thank you for your generosity. Let's say hello also to Leah, to Jean Carlos, to Marie, to Linda, to Manuela, Marcia, Graziella, and of course, everyone else who's joining us right now. So, again, please make sure that you use the live chat either below or to the side, however you're watching, or via the comments on Facebook. And say hello, send us your questions for the for our guests today. Don't forget, we are having a round table at the end. So all these lovely people, you can see this side, this side, all these lovely people there. If you have any questions for them about their works, about about their talks, about Leon Denis, please start to send them via the via the live comments, via the chat. Okay. So where are we going next? Well. That was Munir, who was talking about the things in June. And so in July, we had with us Dan Assisi, who's talking about the big enigma. Sorry, I really want a big dramatic echo whenever I say that. So, Dan, please come and tell us about the big enigma. Or at least a recap of it. Aha, and I also have managed to unmute myself for once because I always have the great fortune of forgetting to unmute myself, but it is a pleasure to be with you. Um, and it is indeed uh, a topic that bags that thunderous, dun -dun, right, Adam, every time we talk about the big enigma. But it is a pleasure to be here with you speaking about a figure that inspires us and enlightens us, such as Leon Denis. And it's no doubt a great uh, opportunity that we have to read his works, and to talk about one of his works in about five minutes or so, it's a great task as well, but a welcome one because it, I think it helps us distill a lot of his wisdom, which is really a lot. If you read any of his books, you see the plethora of different comments, insights, and perspectives that Leon Denis brings. And it was my joy and my pleasure to talk about this lovely book called The Big Enigma. And The Big Enigma it's in a fantastic journey through meaning and purpose, the way I look at it. Because at the end of the day, the big enigma really is about the question and the search for God. And that is such an important question because it permeates our history, our intentions, our doubts, but it also determines our behavior. Because once we begin to understand the concept of God and are truly interested in uh, validating God's existence, it ought to transform how we live our lives. It becomes hard for us to engage perhaps in selfish perspectives or attitudes and behaviors when we believe in a creator that is just and kind to everyone and that obviously created everyone and therefore has no favorites. But apart from that, apart from this framing of the big question, what I truly enjoy and take away from this book and from all of Leon Denis' work is his multiple approach to any topic he engages. And why do I mean by that? Because um, Leon Denis, in many different ways, brings us the importance of two different things in the search for knowledge. The first one is a understanding of science and the external world and this inquiry and this desire to understand and validate physical phenomena, natural phenomena, and, and make sense of it. But at the same time, and surprisingly, I think that Leon Denis is incredibly apt and talented in making us turn inwards to our own observations and our own sentiments, to elicit a sense of wonder and of beauty in everyday things when he talks about skies, the ocean, uh, birds, whatever it may be, as we saw Umberto, for instance, tell us about. And is in that marriage. And in that marriage of the external world and in the interior world or the internal world that we find a great combination that will bring us the certainty of things to come. So um, the greatest takeaway, I think, for me, is the importance of combining these two perspectives in our lives, not just relying on a scientific aspects of things to arrive at our knowledge, but also encompassing everything that we feel and we know within ourselves to also be a reliable, credible, experiential layer of understanding in general. 
And, and, and this marriage of different approaches is something that is, I think, particularly unique to Leon Denis and that fascinates me in every work that I read of his, because we do get to these different sides of the pers different perspectives. We get a little bit of this, we get a little bit of that, and we bring it together in a way that I think presents a very compelling argument for the immortality of the soul and, of course, the great enigma that he proposes to investigate in this book, the enigma of the presence of God in our lives. So, in a roundabout way, what I'm really saying is that Leon Denis is an incredible philosopher of the spirit at the same time that he's also a poet of the soul. He has this ability to bring us sophisticated thinking that cuts through the noise and also to touch upon our feelings and use language that is both uh, inspiring and colorful to get us to realize that there's more to us than meets the eyes that leads us to this certainty or at least increase certainty that we are immortal beings. And as such, we need to think differently about how we render and live our lives. And so to Leon Denis, I only have my thanks because it is a constant reminder of the beautiful, of the importance of marrying these different perspectives, our intellect and our sentiments in this pursuit of knowledge, understanding and personal change. As we continue, to look into ways to answer this big enigma, not for others, but for ourselves, because at the end of the day, it is us. It is for us that he writes. It is for us that he gives this incredible um, painting, this incredible canvas of the beautiful, so that we can have uh, a chance to arrive a little bit closer to the idea of spirituality and immortality um, as a whole. So. If you're looking for a book that blends both philosophy and art, that has a both scientific and sophisticated perspective, but also speaks to the sentiments, then look no further than The Big Enigma by Leon Denis, which you can read really quickly. And I'm sure that if you're watching this, you will enjoy it. Great. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, that is The Big Enigma. So, where do we go after that? Well, in August, we had with us Emmanuel Dutra, who was talking about the various lectures of Leon Denis. And in September, we had Faye Waddington, who was talking about the mystery of J Joan of Arc. Faye, please come and give us a reminder about that book. Hello, everyone. Uh, wonderful to be here. Thank you for the opportunity again. Well, I was just thinking um, in, in ways, well, well, where do I begin? And I think I could say that um, the first impression that when I, when I first, when I, well, reading through the book, I hadn't even finished it. I said, well, if anyone uh, things they you know the, the story of Joan of Arc. Think again, because that would probably be only half of it. And uh, this this book, um, which in the English version, so in in the French and original version was the Jean d'Arc medium, in an English version, the mystery of Joan of Arc. Jean of Arc. It um, is to me is a work of art um, written with a book within a, a book in the sense that um, it was so masterful and and so brave as uh, Leon Denis um, chose to take to study the life of 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 a person who's uh, a, a patron of a country who's uh, remarkable and on her own right and he decided to, to study to investigate her life um, under a new paradigm which is the one um, the scientific studies and the finds of spiritism as, as um, um, organized by Alan Kardec and this means that with that he all those those missing bits that to form a whole personality of Joan of Arc 
um, were put together to, to give her dimension and to make her present and bring her as a strong character of her story and of the book. And uh, you can see and see her participation throughout the book with a huge surprise at the end, which I'm not going to tell. You've got to read it. The, the other part is, excuse me, um, wonderful part of this book is the fact that it was translated by no one less than uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And for a very good reason. First, they were friends and admirers, they admired each other's work. And um, the book was offered to by the author by Denny to Conan Doyle, and Conan Doyle almost begged to, to translate it because not only he liked the, the, the Denis work, but he also he was passionate about the subject. And he felt that he, as, as a writer and as one in the spirit, yes, the spiritualist tradition, um, would be able to read between the lines and be uh, able to write an accurate translation, which he did not find easy at all. And he says that until one has experienced it, uh, one can hardly realize the difficulty which lies in the adequate translation of a French book dealing with a subtle and delicate subject. But he believed that um, he still had the means and he did his best not to put his own opinion, not his own words, uh, um, to, to, to be true to the author. And at the beginning, at the, at the very end, he gave us a message as someone who felt privileged by being able to do it. So it's um, a fantastic work of art and uh, um, in which he highlights, I think, elements that were part in, in the other books that uh, were written until this one. This one was written in 1912 and translated in 1924 into English. Um, I think I can find the elements, uh, the references to all the other studies. So um, I believe the more you read um, Denise's books, especially to read the other books, this one is supposed to grow even more because uh, it's not, it's meant to, to address the subject and co to communicate and be uh, enlightening, even to, the, to, to someone who's not familiar with the su subject or even doesn't like the subject as, as, a, as a, a line of, uh, as a creed or a belief. But he says, well, but what's here is pretty much undeniable and you've got to um, to be honest with yourself to uh, to see what the story of uh, Joan of Arc is all about so yes a, a fantastic read uh, a great opportunity to do it I'm really happy I'm privileged to be uh, have been asked to talk about it thank you, thank you Faye <laughs> Right, so I'm sorry, we're getting a bit of echoing there. Uh, I think we're all sorted now. So, uh, thank you for that, Faye. Uh, so, next up during the year was Alessandri Calgini, who was with us in October talking about that little book we talked out about at the start, Le Pourquoi de la Vie, the reason, meaning, or purpose of life, depending on how you want to translate it. So, Alexandre, please give us a little reminder about this little book. Thank you, Adam. Uh, before that, I just want to say again, as I did last time, I'm, I love the way Adam uh, conducts his, his voice. He's such a radio gentleman. It, it sounds beautiful. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Elsa, for the invitation. Glad to be here with all our friends, our colleagues in the studio. A great opportunity to talk a little bit about the book. The book is uh, in Portuguese, O Porquê da Vida, or Le Pourquoi de la Vie en France, and I was very glad to know uh, today that we have now in English. Congratulations to, to Buzz for the publishing of The Purpose of Life. This book was published in 1897, and uh, within three questions, which are very important questions. Uh, the original book said, in French, of course, but basically, who are we? Uh, where do we come from? And where do we go to? Very key questions, right? And interesting enough, uh, the author, uh, he, Leon Denis, doesn't really address those three questions as answers, but he... he he talks about so many different subjects, very interesting subjects. That of course, he does cover these three questions. As Charles says, it's, it's a very small book, only 45 pages in the Brazilian Portuguese version. So very easy to read, very, very palatable. As Umberto always said, he, he thought it was a very beautiful book. I do believe the same. It's really easy to understand, and mainly for someone who is starting at uh, Spiritism, I, I strongly suggest people read it because it's a very easy, understandable book. Uh, and also, <laughs> you can see by, by my notes here, there's plenty to, to take notes of it. All, all the time you say, oh, this is fantastic, this is brilliant, wow, I didn't think about this, so it's, it's really good. Basically, thoughts about uh, subjects like fate, pain, earth, uh, the freedom, uh, reincarnation, the grace, even consumerism, which is a very up-to-date subject. Uh, the development of the spirit, the new society coming. I'll, I'll try to cover a little bit of each real quick. And it, it's fantastic when you read, you see the flow of his mind. It's it's perfect. It goes from one subject to the other, and there's logic in between all of them. And for what my colleagues just said, there's plenty in common with, with the other books of Leon Denis, of course. Um, basically, he said uh, faith is a bit of a problematic issue because there were so many different... Uh, uh, religions and, and beliefs that uh, that lead people to not to believe in very much on that. And, and what he suggests us is that we move away from what he calls the dust or the, the rust or the, the dirty that have been accumulated within us during the centuries. Uh, we should put away the prejudice, put away the fear, put away the limiting beliefs we have, the ignorance in one word, and try to listen to our own self. That, that's a very beautiful uh, recommendation, I would say. If you if you really go to inside of yourself, there's plenty of responses there. If you res if you ask yourself the title of the book, Le Pourquoi de la Vie, The Reason of Life, The Purpose of Life, O Porquê da Vida, there's plenty of answers already within us. Uh, he goes on, on pain. He says, the vast majority of mankind walk the common road in the midst of dark night ignorant of itself, not understanding the real purpose of existence. Uh, that's a very strong uh, affirmation. But then he comes to something that, for me, is the most beautiful line within this book. He says, that's because the globe, Earth, is on the, a lower rung among the scale of the worlds. We all know that, right? But the, the, the next sentence is, for me, the key one. Here reside mostly infant spirits, that is, souls born for reason not long ago that's very very that's crystal clear i never really thought in that way that's why we suffer that's why we make so many mistakes that's why life is fairly tough or very tough depending on how do you see life right because we're still very young spirits we're still learning we're still making a lot of mistakes he put that so clearly clear he says that's why matter rules within earth in this time of, of our lives but then he says something very interesting as well. He talks about freedom. He says, after centuries under the principles of authority, now mankind increasingly aspires to free himself or his, herself from every obstacle and to direct himself or herself. I, I was an, an executive for many, many years in my, my life, my professional life. And in business, we, we say it's the end of the command and control rule. People do not want to be commanded anymore, to be controlled anymore. Uh, people want to control their own lives. They, they would de they develop what was agreed, but they have to have the control of their lives. And uh, so many years ago, in, in 1897, you know, Denis already said that, right? He says, freedom in all areas will replace coerciveness and authoritarianism. Ooh, that's excellent. Freedom of thought 
and of consciousness. The right of some will become the right of all. We should act on that, right? This will guide nations to new horizons. And he says, uh, we do build and we also break our own handcuffs. So there's so many beautiful philosophical expressions there that are right on top of the main uh, issues on our lives, right? That, that's the beautiful, good philosopher, a brilliant mind as uh, his own mind. Basically, he's talking about autonomy, which is very present, of course, in, in, in Kardec as well. We should take care of ourselves. We should improve ourselves. Once we do, naturally, the surroundings will improve and Earth will grow and humanity will have to live. Uh, he also says something like interesting about, he could connect to the pandemic now. All that from down here seems contradictory, inexplicable, and unjust. When seen from above, will present itself very harmonic and full of logic. Everything unites, when unites, it's chained. The present is the consequence of the past and the preparation for the future. For us who are studying spiritism for, say, 30 years or so, it's quite obvious this, but it's still very crystal clear. And for one starting at the spiritism, it stated very much uh, what we, we know. He says about, about God, he, he defines God very brilliantly. I won't enter that. But basically he says, grace has no reason to be. Justice radiates all over the world. That's that's very uh, liberating, right? Once you don't you don't depend anymore on the grace, you don't depend anymore on God. You can control your life because God allows you to. That's fantastic. That's a great understanding. That's again very liberating. Gives you all the power to take care of your life. Gives you all the freedom to go on. Uh, that that's very linked to what Munir just said about justice, right? Justice is a consequence of our own actions. Uh, when he talk about greed, all means are good for acquiring well-being, fortune. The only goal is that that is deemed worth uh, of life. And he says this will uh, uh, this will only uh, this will depart the society into two: people trying to have everything, very happy, and very unhappy people that have nothing. Uh, and he advises us to avoid fall, fall, falling into pernicious habits, becoming prey to innumerable fictitious needs. That's very up to date, right? Uh, the new generations, probably new spirits, probably more developed spirits who are coming to Earth now, they're right in that stage. They are less consumerist than the previous generations. And finally, uh, basically talks about self-development yes, all the time. We were born with innate faculties and infinite aspirations. Eternity is given to you to develop and satisfy one another. And basically, he, he ends by the what he calls the August principles, which are the love of God, the sense of justice, and the will to progress. So all in all, friends, to say that uh, I was very excited and with the opportunity to talk about this book, The Pourquoi de la Vie, because it's such a small book, but very precious, very, very uh, complete, and very simple at the same time. It was, was great to, to reread it and to prepare the speech I've given, for which I thank you very much, Buzz and the Kardec Radio, and all of you that give me this opportunity. I hope people do read Le Pourquoi de la Vie, or now, how do, how do you call it in English again? It's the, the reason of life, the purpose of the, life. The purpose of life. Perfect. So thank you very much, <laughs> Adam. Okay, thank you, Alexandre. So, well... That was in October. So in November, we had the last talk of the year where Daniel Stiegel was looking at the, looking at Leon Denis, a new perspective on pain. Well, that is a little recap from everyone of what we had during the year. So it's now time to invite all the people who are watching with us to send any questions they have for the panel about either their talks or Leon Denis. And if you're watching us at a later date, we might not be able to see your questions straight away. So, but no, we'll try to get an answer for you anyway. Uh, while we wait for any questions, we obviously have our announcements. So let me bring them up. There we go. And of course, as we said before, 
Le Pourquoi de la Vie, The Purpose of Life, has been launched by Bus. This English edition uh, is available right now on Amazon, available for you to read on Kindle platform. And of course, all the other books for, that have been published by Bus, through Bus, are also available on Amazon here. We can see them there on screen. Other announcements. So, Spiritual Light is a weekly show from uh, Charles Kemp, Elsa Rossi, Silver Gibbons, Stefan Patoza, and also Nigel Giesis, which is every Wednesday at 9 p.m. UK time, looking at various aspects of things from a spiritist point of view. And every two weeks on Tuesdays, there is time to talk, looking at mediumship, and that's from the Spiritist Society of London. And of course, obviously, we're talking about the Leon Denis events. And if you did not watch any of these previous ones, you can find them on Facebook and YouTube of the four channels that have been streaming them. So that is Bus, the Irish Federation, Kardec Radio, and Kardec Group. What a lovely bunch of people they are. As a reminder, the Spiritist Society of Bournemouth and Paul Christian Spiritualist Church, they have been having their series of talks of the psychological series of the Spirit John Giangelis. The last talk of the year will be on Friday, Friday 17th of December. The previous one on the 3rd was with Elsa Rossi. Friday, we're not sure who's going to be with that yet, but... Just go to the Facebook and YouTube channels of the Spiritist Society of Bournemouth and the Pool Christian Spiritualist Church. Insightfully Speaking is a podcast created us by us here at Kardec Group, which is available on YouTube and all good podcast channels. And you can see the faces of some of our guests so far. Uh, we've had six episodes this year. The sixth, the last episode will be coming out hopefully very soon, and there will be more to come next year. So please, go and watch it, go and listen to it, and let us know what you think. Oops. And for those of you who missed it, Spiritism X has been and gone again this year. So on the 20th and 21st of November, we had Spiritism X 2021 with all these wonderful people you can see right there. If you didn't watch it, you can find both the live, well, you can find the live blocks on the Kardec Group YouTube channel, and uh, in the new year, we will have these separate talks as individual videos as well. And it was a very phenomenal event. And of course, if you missed the 2020 and 2019 events, the videos are also on the Kardec Group YouTube channel. Now, there are two fundraising campaigns we'd like to talk to you about. Uh, this one is one we'd like to mention, as always, which is the High Five campaign. The High Five campaign by us here at Kardec Group supports two groups in Brazil, which is uh, Grupo Espírito Sheila in Salvador, Bahia, and Instituto Multirón in Curitiba, Paraná. Uh, these groups work really hard to help many people in their poor communities. And we want, and we think it's only right that we help them, especially during this time of this pandemic, where all of their resources have been quite low. So, if you are able to help, just pop along to www.cardec.org.uk/high-five, where you can find the direct bank transfer details to us here at Cardec Group, or to donate via PayPal. And if you do have a bank account in Brazil, you can donate to these organizations directly as well. Now, as it's a fundraising campaign, please make sure that you follow the instructions to give the donations correctly so that the money can go to the right place. And of course, what happens when we donate? Ah, uh, we share a bit of love. And that's what we want. We want to share a bit of love, give, give a smile to someone, put some food on some plates. So please, there's still time to help uh, with our Christmas fundraising for this. So if you can, look, we've got a photo there. You can see all the activities that they try to do. Food baskets, give give a bit of food on the plate, something special for the end of the year, even trips to go to visit Santa. So please go to cardec.org.uk slash high five and give a donation, whatever you can, 
if you can give a free uh, regular donation, that would be even better as it's a continuous campaign. Right, we now have something a bit more serious, which is an official announcement on behalf of AMI Brazil, the Brazilian Medical Association, Brazilian Spiritist Medical Association, Mansão da Caminho, uh, Centro Espírita Caminho da Redenção, and Editora Leal. Um, and I will play a little video now from uh, Gelson Luiz Roberto, and he will explain what the campaign is. My friends, it's with great joy that we announce at this moment a joint effort of the whole Spiritist movement in favour of the translation of the works of the psychological series of Joanne G. Angelis into English. This is a campaign that we from the Centre for Psychology and Spiritism of AMI Brazil are conducting so that the benefactor's work may be translated by native English speakers and have the depth and seriousness it needs as it is extremely complex material which requires a lot of care to be translated. We count on everyone for this campaign so that not only the benefactor's work but other books related to the psychological series can reach as many people outside of Brazil as possible. We count on everyone. A big hug, and may the divine light bless us in this project. Okay, and as we said, this is an official announcement on behalf of AMI Brazil, Mansando Caminho, Central Espírito Caminho da Redenção, and Editor Liao. And it is this project, the Joana G. Angelis Translation Project. So please, if you can, please help and donate towards the new English editions of the psychological series. And with this, there's other books which are re related to the series, which are being planned for translation as well. Uh, all you need to do is very simple. Just go to cardec.org.uk slash Joanna, which is J-O-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Uh, the address is there on the screen. And you can find on that page all of the PayPal buttons to be able to donate in Brazilian reais, British pounds, US dollars, or euros, depending on where you are in the world, and as well as all the posters for you to share on social media as well. Uh, this is a big campaign. There are going to be other announcements about this coming out soon. Um, Cardec Group is supporting this campaign. It is not our campaign specifically, but we are supporting it to help with the fundraising. So if you can, please go along and please donate. Any amount will be highly beneficial. And of course, if you want to find out anything else about Spiritism here in the UK, you can contact the British Union of Spiritist Societies at www.bus.org.uk. You can send an email or follow on Facebook. And of course, those of you who are watching live will know about the, the BUS uh, YouTube channel as well. Right, that is it for the announcements. Um, let's see. So anyone else who has any questions, please send them now. We have now this moment of a quick roundtable with our guests. I know that we... The poster said that we'd be ending around six o'clock, but we may go over just a few minutes. But so, first of all, thank you to everyone for bringing your reflections and no, and for your time with us today. So, let's just see. We do have one or two little questions. Uh, one of them here is so. How are your thoughts about the fact that these events have been seen by people around the world and that there are now new people around the world who are getting to understand and know Leon Denis? I'll jump in, Adam, because we're really shy <laughs> right, today. Um, I think it's a wonderful thing that we have a chance to bring forth to our own awareness the, the depth and breadth of uh, Leon de Lise's work. And it's truly a great pleasure to be able to share that with different people and learn from different people. Look at us. We are nine here in this, uh, you know, 
little box of boxes. But in fact, we had a lot more than nine people this year reflecting only on the D. And I love that we have different perspectives and different insights into what his work means. So I am very appreciative that we have both the access to his works and the chance to dive deeper into it. So it's just a lovely thing to be able to be with all of you and um, reflect on the great legacy that Denis leaves us. Adam, may I put a question? Yes, of course. Uh, it's for all of my colleagues, but especially perhaps for Umberto. I think I've discussed this already with Umberto and perhaps to Dan as well. Uh, my, my understanding, friends, is that uh, Spiritism is not a religion, it's a philosophy. And Kardec in Ukiya okay, Spiritism does say so. But uh, in reading uh, Leon Denis, I think he's very much a philosopher. But in, taking a look at his, uh, at his career, at his bio, and Charles uh, did the study his bio, I, said, I saw something interesting that in the Spiritist, International Spiritist meeting in 1920-something, he was totally against taking the, the, the religious part out of, of the definition of the Spiritism. So my question to you is, what do you think? Did he believe Spiritism was a religion or not? Since I was mentioned, I, I would like to, to give the, the first answer. Well, um, Kardec was very uh, reluctant to use the word religion. He always avoided that. He always tried to, to approach the religious phenomena, which he recognized, uh, obviously, from um, different perspectives, uh, using the word spiritualism or spiritualistic or spiritual. But uh, always in, in, in philosophy, uh, the abundance of terminology is uh, a big problem because uh, we can inflate the, the, the number of the names that we have for sometimes the same things. And uh, other times we do not have the precise words to, to make distinctions that are very necessary so that we struggle with the words as they uh, had this, the same meaning, while in fact they, they have not. So we could speak about a religious philosophy. Some religions are more philosophical than others, while others more dogmatic. We have uh, among uh, the, the many different philosophies, philosophies that are against religion, they are pro-religion, there are um, religious philosophies. So um, to avoid um, technical and unnecessary problems with the words, I think we should uh, uh, dig deeper in, in Kardec's philosophy and also Leon Denis' uh, remarkable and very peculiar approach to Kardec's philosophy which includes a lot of, uh, I would say, intrinsic spirituality and uh, religiousness. And you can spot the, the religious experience to mention or to paraphrase William James, for example, or uh, you can spot the, the religious feelings without necessarily have a, a religion in your hands or a religious institution when we are talking about spiritism. I do not think personally that spiritism is a good candidate for the title religion, but I think it deals a lot with the religious experience. I love that. And, and if I may jump in as well, I love what Umberto brought us because I think in a way he was channeling the Kardashian uh, mindset, right? Kardec starts the Spirits book by doing a phenomenal job of explaining and defining and let's say even disambiguating the word spiritism. And I think that we ought to do the same here with this word as well. Uh, the word religion is definitely understood differently by different people. And I would wholeheartedly uh, agree that if we mean religion to be a formal organized endeavor by people, structures and forms, 
I would vehemently say spirit is definitely not a religion. It's quite the opposite, quite living. But if we mean that religion for us um, is perhaps a connection with the divine, then I think spirit is definitely falls into that category. So I think discussion about whether religion is, is, uh, or is, but if we, in the, and I say Kardec, I think that we get a little bit of, of a better flavor for understanding that um, spiritism has virtual religious implications, the deepest sense of the world, but it's not an organized religion. And I think that's why Kardec um, expressive call it different point. So thank you, Umberto, for that perspective and Alexander for that question. Because I think that's something that comes up, right? And I think that the the, the, the the you know the the deciding factor, what is it that we define religion to be? Uh, I would like to make make some comments too. Is that okay, Ada? Yes, please do, please do. Well, I have a different perspective. I I believe that the reason Kardec avoided to saying uh, spiritism is a religion because he was worried about uh, relating religion to hierarchies, dogmas, such kind of things. But I think uh, this is not the essence of a religion. What, what's apparent? This is not. A, it's 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 what matters, right? The essence of a religion is the belief in a transcendent power. And that's the case of our, of our spiritism. And uh, so uh, I, I understand that spiritism, I, I follow Emmanuel, who, who mentioned the divine triangle, something like that, and says that uh, spiritism has a triple aspect, science, philosophy, and religion. And if we, for example, see the gospel according to spiritism, uh, there we see, uh, we, we have, for example, the great commandment the law of love, right? Uh, even in the, the spiritual book, we see the law of worship, worshiping God. Well, that's typical of religion, it's not of philosophy. In the gospel also, we, we, we have some chapters about uh, faith, the power of a faith. We have uh, a chapter about prayer. And uh, we also in the Genesis, book of Genesis, Kardec, in the first chapter, he talks about the revelation, not from God, uh, surely, but from high evolved spirits. But it's a revelation. So faith, revelation, uh, love of worship, loving God about all things, prayer, all this is typically religious. So for me, I, I have no doubt that spiritism is a religion. It's not just a moral. Because in moral or philosophy, you don't you, you don't tackle with these kind of issues. Philosophy in you know, a lot of things, right? So, just to 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 give it, to to leave it here, uh, my my position about that. Thank you. May I step in also quickly, <laughs> because uh, but I mean, um, as a French. Uh, citizen uh, with the culture original from French, from France, uh, clearly when you go to the, even to Wikipedia and look the definition of religion in France, it is clearly written, it's synonym of superstition for most of the people. So is spiritism a superstition? Definitely not. So in France, definitively, or in French, we cannot say spiritism is a religion. Maybe we could say uh, in, in Portuguese that uh, Spiritismo is uh, a religion, maybe. But in French, you cannot say that because uh, most of the people, when I say most of the people, is more than 50%, 70%, 80% of the people do not have the sense of religion as the link with God, this philosophical original sense of the world. So the word is understood uh, in, a, in a negative way as superstition. And even in Wikipedia, when you look at the definition in French, it's written, there is no consensus today of all what, is more, what, what the word religion means. So basically, it's a word which means something and means the opposite and means whatever you want. So if you want to express you clearly, uh, giving a definition of uh, Spiritism, you cannot use the word religion because it's to totally differently understood 
depending on the people you have in front of you. And uh, here, uh, I think one of the biggest, uh, nicest thing I, I, I rediscovered from Leon Denis is uh, in the in his book, uh, the problem of uh, being and destiny. In the in the introduction, no, in the first section, uh, uh, evolution of the suit, and there he's clearly writing that uh, uh, the characteristic of the spiritist revelation, uh, so, so that. Even Kardec wrote, "Spiritism is not a, a, the science. The science is studying matter. So the spirit is not studying by science. So it's studied by spiritism. So in such, spiritism is not even a science which is studying only matter or with a materialistic paradigm. And on the same side, spiritism has no dogma, no rituals, no hierarchical sacerd uh, sacerdotal hierarchy, and so on. So it's also not a religion." And Leon Denis is clearly uh, writing uh, because uh, with this new revelation, we, all the people, are asking, what, what are you, spiritism? Are you science or religion? And Leon Denis is saying, oh, why don't you, uh, you always have to put the thing back into the boxes you are used to. Yeah. We had the, 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 the science box, we had the spiritist box, what the religious box, and what Kardec did basically and expressed wonderfully by Leon Denis, he took the best of science, which is the methodology, and removed the, mat uh, the, the, the materialistic do uh, paradigm, uh, dogmatic. Uh. He took the best out of the religion, which are these moral laws, these diamonds uh, that uh, Jesus left us and that thanks God have been kept into the Gospels in spite of all the dust and the the, the rubbish which has been added later on by mankind. So he took the best out of both and made the new thing sought out of the box, which is spiritism. So if we take the thing out of the box and put it back in the box, we are going uh, backwards. So we should really, and Leon Denis had a very brilliant, brilliant expression on this in this section one of uh, the problem of being and destiny. And this is, I would say, also one of the biggest issues we have here in France, huh? because uh, <clears throat> we have a lot of people coming from Brazil. I think it's not only in France, it's maybe also in Europe, huh? uh, making a wonderful work, really huge dedication and uh, uh, tireless work uh, in order to disseminate and to help and whatever, but with relatively limited success uh, to reach the native people. And that is one of the key subjects. It's not only the word religion, it's also all what is behind the religion, behind this negative perception of the world religion. The, the reason why a lot of people here in Europe have, uh, there were big fights, revolution with a lot of blood in order to get rid of all these abuses of the religions, of the traditional religions and uh, of, of associated to this heteronomy. You have to do what I ask you to do because it's written there, because the Pope has uh, told it, because I don't know what else. And if you don't do it, you go to hell. If you do it, you go to heaven, you see, with a punishment and uh, a word. And nobody wants this anymore. And Leon Denis is really wonderfully explaining uh, the, the liberty, this autonomy that the people today are claiming, even if some are not yet capable of it, but it's a clear trend that we have today. And uh, the, the world of regeneration will be fundamentally autonomous. And this is, I would say, the basic uh, characteristic of spiritism, even so in Kardec, sometimes in the form uh, you can see sentences like God punishes or the punishment or uh, uh, and so on. Uh, when you read really through it, you see this application of the law of nature, which are the same for everyone, the law of cause and effect, uh, which are explaining th what is called uh, punishment uh, in the spirit book, uh, for instance, or in the gospel, that we today would write in a different way. And Leon Denis really understood this very deeply. And so this is also one of the key reasons why the people today reading Leon Denis appreciate him very, very much because he is really totally in line with his basic law of liberty, which is one of the fundamental uh, principles of the spiritist body of knowledge. Yeah. Thank you. Can I just add something? Ve very quickly, yes. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, th th this is uh, th just th to say that I think it, uh, uh, if talking about Leon Denis and the Spiritism in, in general, it taps into people's ultimate need for connection to something, to a higher um, plane of life. And, and that's, that goes from the tribal communities, from the, the, the history of mankind, of humankind. You know, there's the need to connect and to find a reason and to find a logic. So I think this is uh, what, I don't know what exactly, but you've got, can you call it a straight of mind, it's a way of thinking, it's a prisma. You know, if, if these words have all been uh, um, marked by, by um, negative experiences, then in that case, is it a philosophy? Yes, because it's a way of life, it's a take on life. Is it a religion in in a way in the way that it connects it, it allows people to seek a connection to a higher level of their own nature with the freedom to seek information the freedom to 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 pray and and to express themselves in any way they think please there's nobody to say you do this you do that now what you do is your conscience and and you learn you're free to learn. Knowledge is there. You have to be up to standards to get to knowledge, but you're not forbidden the knowledge. And I think that's what joys people to to a higher aspiration. Thank you. Now, obviously, that's a very polemic question mm -hmm. and discussion in general and we don't really have time to, to go into that in any more detail today and we did have a few other questions but unfortunately we have sort of gone over time Umberto has given his apologies he had to leave already uh, we do have one or two other questions which maybe we can get slightly quicker answer um, so we have a question here saying um where are we? I don't really know the works of Leon Denis. Where should I start to study them? Which book should I read first? I think Umberto answered that already. Huh? The, the, the purpose of life is an excellent start. And then I think it will call the attention and give the willing to, to read also the other books. And the other books, as far as I know, most of them are available in English. He, uh, with the United States Militist Federation. Great. Great. So there we go. Okay. So, um, and the next question we'll go to is, no, we've just read that one. I think that we can skip that one. So Leon Denis obviously faced various difficulties, including living through the Spanish flu pandemic. Now, what do you think we can learn from his works which we can apply to our current lives about facing these difficulties, especially these times of pandemic tra and transition, all these challenges that we need to go through? I'd like to start by just quoting him. I actually purposefully selected this it's one of the last paragraphs of the book, After Death, that uh, ties into our, our searching life. For, for those who are here with us, as usually we do at Cardiac Radio, we're still experiencing a pandemic. Suffering is really still wild in the world. And Leon Denis brings a very consoling and hopeful message. And at the very end, the way he talks to us, he even calls us the readers. And he says, if you want to get rid of your earthly sorrows and avoid painful reincarnations, keep this moral law imprinted inside you and practice it. Grant only the indispensable to the material body, to the transient being that will vanish with death but cultivate carefully the spiritual being that will live forever. Wow, that's powerful. Just repeat that last bit again. Oh yeah, cold, Leon cold. Denis phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> he, sa he says more. 
yeah. but the last piece grant only the indispensable to the material body to the transient being that will vanish with death but cultivate carefully the spiritual being that will live forever i think that helps to sum up so many things alexandri real quick just coming back to the question again uh from 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 the book uh, the meaning of life right all that from down here seems contra contradictory inex inexplicable and unjust when seen from above will present itself very harmonic and full of logic everything united unites it is chained to the spirit fascinated appears the majestic order that regulates the universe the present is a consequence of the past and the preparation for the future. Any other views from anyone? Yes, I, I'd like just to add something. Just a quick reminder from from uh, part two of the uh, the book Life and Destiny, where it says the law of justice. It works everywhere all the time. So just let's let's remember that whatever happens is within the law of justice. We are not outside it, never. Great. Any other comments from anyone regarding that? Nope. We do have other questions, but we are actually, I have to say, out of time. So are there any last remarks from any of our wonderful guests about anything that we've talked about today, about Leon Denis, about what this has meant to you, about your process of learning, what you've been able to reflect on? Let's, let's go around clockwise on the screen. So, Alexandri, let's go with you first. Basic logic, S. Kardec, everything is okay, everything is explainable, everything has a purpose. Just be calm, pay attention to yourself, listen to your inner world, and act as, as you should, and everything else is going to, be, to follow properly. That, that's the main message I get from his books, which is very ah, calmful, very good. Charles? Yes, so the, the, the clear visions of the Spiritist teachings about all this evolution of the thoughts uh, from the past until now, uh, looking to these moral laws which are universal coming from that we find in the roots of most of the uh, even antique uh, religions. Um, all this, uh, how to say, the, the, the people today which are demanding more logic, which are demanding answers to understand before believing something. And uh, really, Leon Denis has, is doing deep analysis of uh, a lot of societal issues. Of course, it was at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. But most of these society, societal issues are still very actual today, like uh, depression, like uh, suicide, like uh, uh, selfishness, uh, and so on. And he is really bringing, with its poesy, uh, I think uh, Dan expressed this very well, in a form, the language of Leon Denis is uh, 50 years younger than the language of Kardec, and it's, it's, it's very, very poetic and soft the way he explains it. So it's really strongly convincing, not only the people who are uh, using the pure reasoning uh, in analyzing the text, which is, uh, of course, Kardec is of excellence, but also the ones which are coming with a feeling to feel the words and the incentives and all these encouragements that Leon Denis brings in this wonderful poetic form. So he, he gave really an additional dimensions to all these teachings. And uh, the last point I wanted to stress about Leon Denis is he was always extremely open. He never said, okay, spiritism, 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 Kardec, Kardec, Kardec. He was extremely uh, attached, bound to the, ba to the basic rules of the spiritism. But you see, he talks spiritism or modern spiritualism, which is the same thing. 
Uh, he was talking with theosophists, he was talking with mas Freemasons, he was talking with a lot of different uh, uh, spiritualist uh, trends. And this openness is really also an example that we need to follow today, because today what I see is too much focusing only on spiritism and forgetting all this uh, huge number of other uh, spiritualist uh, movements. Uh, which are so close, so close uh, to spiritism teachings, with to the spiritism principles and so on. So uh, this example of openness of Leon Denis also uh, an, should be followed by us today in this uh, in the in the spiritist movement. So that's it. Thanks a lot to all of you. Thanks a lot to Leon Denis for bringing us all these diamonds, these wonderful works. And uh, I'm very happy to see now that uh, in the English language in particular, reaching so many countries, huh, as Elsa just listed, uh, in Africa and so on, uh, English language or simplified English, let's say so, sorry, Faye and Adam, is really the one which uh, has today the biggest impact wherever around the world. E even so, even in the uh, Islamic countries, which are more and more and more interested in, in these works. And uh, for instance, in Turkey, there are several books of uh, Leon Denis which are already translated into Turkish. So this shows that uh, the language of Leon Denis uh, is also universal. And thanks to the English lang uh, language, it will uh, have a bigger penetration in all the other parts of the world, even the one where which are not Christians, but uh, with uh, different cultures. So thanks a lot also to you, Adam, and also to Buzz for all this. Thank you. Dan, any last quick remarks from you? I won't belabor much longer because I think that um, what really strikes as fascinating about Leon Denis has been shared here many different times. But I do want to, to do a plus one, if you, if you will, on this idea that Leon Denis spoke to both our minds, but also to our sensibilities, that he had the ability to be both uh, intellective, but also sentimental in a good way. And I think that's a good reminder for us today, uh, for our world and for our times when sometimes we feel like there's only one way to go about things, whether we only need to look at science or we only need to follow our gut. And I think that we've been getting in trouble because of that, because um, sometimes science and hard data can be misinterpreted and sometimes our feelings can be misinterpreted too. And so we have this polarization out there in the world where we refuse to see data and we just go by our gut and we have a, a reverse action that we refuse to acknowledge people's feelings and none of those will get us where we need to go. And I think that Leon Denis is a, is a great reminder that is important for us to, to enmesh, to marry these two perspectives. Yes, to continue to search and understand the philosophical and scientific causes of thing, but also take time for reflection, self-reflection and meditation and contemplation about what does that mean to us and how do we feel about it? So I really appreciate Denis' rounded approach to life. And that's one that I hope I can continue to emulate. And I hope uh, that his readers uh, whether they are, you know, 50 years old or 20 years old, will be able to pick up quickly in, in, in any of his work. So I'm grateful for him for bringing this well-rounded perspective that will continue to inspire us and remind us that it's important to pay attention to our minds and our feelings. Thank you. And talking about appreciation to others, uh, we need to say a quick hello to all the other people who've been watching with us. So Hello to Rita, to Val, to Ruben, to Linda, Paolo, Gerald, Nora, Dina, Vlasta, Rihanna, Anna Paula, Liz, Leandro, and Gisela. Thank you. And everyone else who's been with us who hasn't didn't say hello or didn't click the like, thank you for being with us. Uh, Faye, any last quick remarks from yourself? Yes, I'd like to, it's a very quick one. Uh, actually, it's a remark by Arthur Conan Doyle about all this and about Denis. And he says, um, confirming what you all have said, a great crisis of world thought and experience is at hand. And when it's passed, such views as those as Monsieur Denis 
may form the basis upon which the reformed philosophies of the future will be based. I think that's it. Yeah. Absolutely. And many people like to cite that about mm. how this can be the future of things. Mm. Thank you. Roberto. Well, um, <clears throat> I think, uh, Adam, that uh, what we can learn from Leon Denis is what he himself expressed through his works. What I see in, in his work is a, a man, a great example of a faith. And I think that is very important in this uh, present, very pretty much rational world. And uh, because of uh, the great faith that he, he had, he was very optimistic. He had a very optimistic view from, uh, of life. And then another thing that he emphasized in all his works is the idea of brotherhood, something that is much needed also from this to this very polarized world that we have today. So I think we can learn a, a lot from, from Denis. And thank you to participate in this great event with all you all. Thank you. Vanessa. Leon Denis reminds us of the importance of simplicity in his teachings and in his life. In a much complex world, reading Leon Denis brings us back to the simplicity or the majestic simplicity of life. Absolutely. And Munir, we'll end with you with your last thoughts and reflections. Thank you, Adam. Uh, to me, you know, the, the, the picture I want to end with is uh, that within Spiritism, Alan Kardec is, is the teacher. And Leon Denis, he is the coach, he is the personal trainer. He brings Kardec to our practical life. And as it's been said by Vanessa, with such a, a simplicity, clarity, that it is impossible not to understand Spiritism uh, reading uh, Leon Denis. Well, that's it. Thank you so much. So I'm going to put all of you backstage now. Uh, don't worry, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because we need to end right now. So let's just put you all backstage. And that gives me a chance just to say once more a very big thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for all of you who have been with us this year of celebrating the 175th anniversary of Leon Denis. So let's say a really big thank you again to Alexandre, to Charles, to Faye, Umberto, Munir, Roberto and Vanessa for being with us today. Thank you also to our other guests who were not with us. So that was Flavio, to Danielle and Emmanuel as well. Thank you. And thank you to the British Union of Spiritist Societies for organizing this event. Thank you to like uh, thank you again to Stephen Bertozzo from the Irish Spiritist Federation for allowing us to use their StreamYard account this past year. Thank you to the Irish Federation, to Kardec Radio, to and Kardec Group for retransmitting these talks as well. And thank you to absolutely everyone who's been with us during the year, saying hello, asking questions. And of course, thank you to Alan Kardec and Leon Denis, because without them, we wouldn't need to be here today. So, just leaves me to say I that I wish you all a very merry, a very safe, a very socially distanced Christmas, and an even merrier, happier, and also socially distanced New Year. Bye-bye, and please stay very, very safe. <laughs>